Are you worried that you may be suffering from depression, but not sure how to recognize it? Is something off that you just can't quite explain? Or do you have a friend or loved one that you're worried may be suffering from depression, but don't know what to look out for? If so, then this is the video for you. In this video, we're going to go over the top 10 signs of depression, so you can know when to seek help. Welcome to Family Man. I'm Dr. Richardson, and this is your home for practical and accurate information to help your family make healthy decisions. This is the channel that focuses on bringing better health to your home. In this episode, we're going to go over the top 10 signs that you or a loved one is suffering from depression. It's estimated that over 26 million people just in the United States suffer from an episode of major depression each year. Depression can be a chronic and debilitating condition that can affect all aspects of one's life and is the underlying cause of the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, and that's suicide. It's a big deal, and it's important to be able to recognize the symptoms, both in yourself as well as in others. Depression, or the technical term major depressive disorder, is a multifactorial problem that ultimately changes the chemical processes in your brain that are responsible for maintaining your mood. Unfortunately, there isn't any kind of blood test that we can do to diagnose it. So we use specific criteria in regards to the behavior and symptoms that you can see. We use something called the DSM criteria. These are validated criteria found in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, put out by the American Psychiatric Association. So when we look to diagnose depression, according to the DSM criteria, we're looking to see if over the past two weeks, on a daily or near daily basis, you have felt five or more of the symptoms that we're going to go over. So let's get into it. The first one is going to be a persistent depressed mood or irritability. This means that you feel down all the time. It's hard to find joy in life. Oftentimes this is most noticeable when you really have nothing to feel down about. Life may be going good and there's a lot that should be bothering you, but you just can't find joy in it. Or maybe more subtle, but just as important, you're irritable or angry all the time. You're snapping at the kids or your spouse. Your work doesn't want you to be around because you're always just so angry. Sign number two is going to be a loss of interest or pleasure in most or all activities. You have hobbies or things that you enjoy doing, but now you just can't get yourself to do them. That golf game that you were trying to improve? Not interested. The fish are biting? Not today. Your favorite artist is coming to concert, but you just can't do it. The thought of doing these things just makes you tired and isn't worth it anymore. Now, sign number three is changes in your sleep patterns. You just can't find the energy or desires to get out of bed. You end up sleeping through your alarms or want to sleep the day away. Or it can be the opposite, where you just can't sleep. You'll toss and turn all night, unable to turn your brain off. Or it can be a combination of the two, where you toss and turn all night and then sleep the day away. And number four is a significant change in your appetite or eating habits. This can also go both ways. You can have no appetite at all, or even your Thanksgiving feast you look at and you take one bite and are done. Or you can have the opposite, where all you feel like doing is eating. It can be the only thing that seems to bring you comfort. Of course, with this, we can see large swings in weight, either up or down. The fifth sign is one that we call psychomotor slowing. What this means is that you just start to feel like you're slowing down. Your speech slows down. You move slower. The best illustration of this is Eeyore in Winnie the Pooh. That's just what you start to act like. You, you just move at a slower pace. A lot of the time, people describe it to me as if they're walking through water. They can do it, but it just seems to take that much more effort. You tend to see even their facial expressions slow down and droop. But you can also experience the opposite, where you feel agitated and restless and you just can't quite slow down. Both of these symptoms are usually significant enough that others around you will notice it. The sixth sign is a decrease in energy and feelings of fatigue. Now, this isn't your typical, I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm tired symptom. This tends to be that bone-wearing tiredness. Simple tasks just wear you out. I hear people describe it sometimes as I'm so tired it hurts. Sleep doesn't help it and coffee can't get you out of it. The seventh sign is a significant change in your ability to concentrate, think, or make decisions. You may wonder if you have ADD. You start reading and read the same paragraph several times. You may find that your schoolwork or employment starts to suffer as you just can't get things done. Your parents, spouse, or other loved ones, or especially your boss, may be getting frustrated with you as things that you used to be able to accomplish without a problem are now getting missed. I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of people describe it as if they're walking around in a fog. Your brain just can't quite process like you used to. 
The eighth sign would be thoughts of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt. We all have times when we feel down on ourselves, but this is much more. We're consumed with thoughts that we aren't good enough. We feel that we aren't worthy of our friends, that we're worthless to our family or their loved ones. These feelings tend to increase our isolation because we start to feel like we're a burden on others. We get played by feelings of guilt that we're just not good enough. We aren't a good enough mom, dad, employee, or employer. The thoughts start to affect our everyday behavior. The ninth symptom can be symptoms of widespread pain. Now, this isn't one of the official criteria, but we see it frequently. Depression time oftentimes just hurts. You don't have any specific injury or even location you can point to, but you just hurt Nick all the time. Normal things that may not bother you or cause pain will start to cause pain. Now the final and tenth sign is also the most serious one. Depression unfortunately can also lead to suicidal thoughts or attempts. You can start to be plagued with recurrent thoughts that would be better off if you were not here. You can start to feel like the world would be a better place if you were not alive. Your family would do better if you were not here. You're so worthless that nobody would miss you. You may think about ways to make this happen, and unfortunately, all too often, attempts are made and many are successful. If you're having thoughts like this, you need to know that none of them are true. You are needed and loved. These thoughts are becoming coming because of the disease of depression. When they do come, you need to get help. Talk to a loved one, your doctor, call 911, go to the emergency room, or call the National Suicide Hotline. Here's the number if you need it. If you have loved ones who are going through this, talk to them. Get them the help they need. Depression is a serious and possibly life-threatening disease that unfortunately still has a stigma associated with it that keeps people from feeling like they can seek care. It's a very common condition that can be very effectively treated though. If you feel like you or a loved one are suffering through a lot of the signs that we discussed today, get in and get help. Right now, you may feel like you're stuck in a hole, but there's light out there. There is help, so take that leap of faith and talk to somebody about it. And you'll be amazed at the new life that you can have. It's also important to know that although these symptoms are the most common ones to have when you're depressed, that there are other medical conditions that can also cause these symptoms. So don't try to make the diagnosis on your own. Use this list as a motivation to seek care and get an appropriate diagnosis. Now, if you found this information to be helpful, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. And if your health is important to you, consider subscribing. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our other content. If you feel like you're suffering from depression, in addition to talking to your doctor, keep watching here to learn about some non-medication options that you can do to help with depression. And click here to learn about one of the more common medications that we use to treat depression. There are great options out there in treating this condition. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richards. And remember, take care of your body, because it's the only one you have.